On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, Crushing the Credit Card Debt Cycle. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law, and welcome back your financial coach, George Corbello. Welcome, George. Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> how you doing, Sean? How's everything going, buddy? The, the subdued, dulcet yeah, we, tones. We're, we're going to do an NPR episode today and, and see how things go. It is early in the morning. I am kind of tired. <laughs> All right, where's my coffee? I've only had the one cup of coffee. So, wow. It's all good, brother. It's all good. Yeah. So, got a couple articles that we were going to talk about today, all about uh, debt and credit cards and yep. debt cycles. Um, before we get there, I did want to tell you about a little victory that I had um, about a week ago, week and a half ago, something okay. like that. Had a client that owed American Express $140,000. They okay. had gotten a judgment against him, and he owed them $140,000. We were able to settle it for that client. You want to guess how much? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, can I do the prices right? And then be like, one dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except there's no one playing against you. Oh, sorry. Then, uh, I, what, uh, let's say half of that. H- half of that amount. Less. Less than half of that Less amount. Less than half. And what kind of witchcraft did you do to make that, that number? What was the number? So it was 35000 That's not bad. Which is about 20%, give or take. Okay. Um, and it was interesting. So the clients had said to me that years and years and years ago, bef- when the lawsuit first got started, or even maybe before the lawsuit got started, and, and when I was working on it, judgment had already been entered, and they were moving forward towards trying to collect. One issue that weighed in my client's favor is he had nothing that they could collect against. He okay, was, that makes it a lot easier. He, he was on Social Security sure. or, or disability, and, and they, he, I think he owned a house, but it wasn't in his name. Okay. Which wouldn't have mattered because it was his homestead residence. Bank couldn't touch it anyway. But um, so they, the bank had offered him 17000 he said, however many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, whatever it was. Right. So I emailed the bank's attorney, and I said, well, I understand your client offered mine 17000 however many years ago. Is that offer still on the table? And I got a response back from the attorney. My client's never offered yours 17000 Okay. But my client would take thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sold. <laughs> so my client actually had been saving up some money. He was able to save up a, a lump sum of money. Um, and so we were able to get it done for nice. about 20%, which is unusual because yeah. typically, for, in my experience, American American Express won't settle for anything less than about, I don't know, 80, 85, 90. Oh, wow. So um, they're, they're, they're very strict when they, it comes to the settlements and what they're trying to get their money back. Yeah, when it comes to settlements. Now, there's one other time with American Express that I was able to get them to go away for zero. And uh, it was a client that had i guess had a a a business partner or maybe an ex-girlfriend or something like that i can't remember but that person that that ex or or former business partner whatever she was um, had opened up a card in his name okay and so american express kept saying well he called in and authorized the card by by calling in we said fine well you say you record everything send us send us the the recordings the only recording that they ever sent us was a recording where my client called in and said, I never set up this debt. Ah, uh, okay. That was the only recording they had. I said, well, where's the recording that shows that he, he set up it. the account? Right. They couldn't produce it. There you go. But because they couldn't produce it, and our defense was, we never set up the account, they dismissed the case. Nice. And they, and they let it go. And actually, I do believe my client that, I guess, this woman uh, had – gotten someone else to call in to impersonate him wow to get the card that's that's kind of sneaky yeah so that's how we were able to make that one be go careful away. who you get in bed with i guess yeah, you know exactly. it's like man even in business you got to be careful with that kind of stuff well like, in this case trust? i don't know if it was literal or figuratively <laughs> well, but, exactly but, yeah <laughs> holy cow I, i've got to say uh, well so the, the, man let me see do i have i don't think i have any any wins like that where i'm you know settling debts but i think uh, the one thing i'll give you a few of my clients it's it's not about like the numbers, right? The numbers are working in their favor. We're paying down debt. Um, it's the mindset that I've had. I've had a few clients where they start to realize, you know, having the budget, right? Having the plan allows them to really get control of how they're spending money. And I think that's the difference when it comes to 
you know, this journey. It, it, we think it's going to be easy. We're just like, oh, we'll put it on a piece of paper, then, right, the budget's going to work, right? Isn't that yeah. how it works? Absolutely. <laughs> you just put it on paper and it's done. <laughs> but I think, I think the, the, the thing that when the light bulb goes off in the sense of like, hey, I've got a plan on paper. I've, you know, I'm pl playing within the numbers, you know, the, within the money that I have itself and not having to create new credit card debt or new debt. Because mm -hmm. I think we're going to talk about like you, these numbers are scary in regards to what you know what's out there, uh, but we're going to we're going to start to realize like those clients they're like well you know what I mean like things are life's going to happen and I'm still going to be able to uh, maneuver my money and still be able to play within what I have you know leave yeah. no 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 lifestyle creep um, and I, I, it's that that feeling of control and alleviation of stress helps out a lot of uh, a lot of people. So again, guys, you know, my, my recommendation is that budget is your friend and it's not your enemy, but it's the execution, what the mindset, I mean, you don't lose weight, right? Or, or you don't save money if you don't actually go and do something. Uh, go to the gym, you know, right. You don't lose weight something. if you don't lose that gym membership. <laughs> you, you can't just sign up for a gym membership and automatically you lose weight. Oh, is that how? Oh, man, I think I, that's I, how it goes. I got to try that. I'll, I'll let you know yeah. how, how that goes this week. Yeah, I've heard stories about you and Mo. Um, <laughs> you, which kind of reminds me of the episode we did a couple weeks ago yep. with Bruce Scott. Yes. Gosh, you want to talk about mindset? Yes. Good Lord. I, I was listening to that episode again uh couple of days ago. I listen to every episode. So I was listening to that episode and uh, gosh, he got me fired up again. Just listening the, to it, it. The, it's funny, the inspiration in regards to like how to motivate and push people itself, but you could tell his passion on how to help people, what he's done for himself, what he's been through uh, and being able to put that back into a program itself. It's, it's definitely inspired. I agree right. with you there, man. It was just some fire with, with like, okay, it's like, uh, where, where, where can I, uh, like not have this latte <laughs> do something else with this money. I think but he I, was he was clearly I think he was our most um uh passionate yeah um guest on the show. Uh, again, again four, only 14 steps though. So yeah, you know just <laughs> It's funny. Yeah, 14 it's, 7 you know, 45, you know, the, hey if I, it works who cares? Let's go. I had someone comment on Facebook and said I can only do 10. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter if it's 14 or 10 or 400. Just do something. Get get some, get started. You'll get the rest of the steps uh, yeah. at another at a later date. So speaking of, uh, you know, we, we both of us um, search around on the Internet, um, which I'm not going to say that. I'm going to make myself sound old <laughs> if I say that. We both search around on the Internet. On the tubes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and come up with different articles we use for content for all of you. And so a couple that we found that, that I thought were interesting – this one on uh, CNBC, Americans owe nearly one trillion in credit card debt, and it broke it down by age. And so, uh, I'll link to the article in the show notes if you want to pull it up. But I thought it was really interesting. So it looked at total credit card debt, 2020, 21, 22, and I guess so far, right in, in 23. Correct. Is this so far this, in 23? It, 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 well, it, dude, it's only June. So. Good <laughs> lord. So and then and then it broke it down. It's went uh, it lumped in everybody less than twenty nine because I assume people don't really start getting credit cards until they're eighteen, nineteen. Hopefully, 20. yeah. Hopefully, I, I, I agree. Your first so, job, maybe out of college. Everybody less than twenty nine, uh, then thirty to thirty nine, forty to forty nine, fifty to sixty four, and then sixty five uh, plus. And I would tell you, you want to guess which age range had the most debt. But you've you, got it in front of well, you. I've got it in front of me, but I, I'm th I, I didn't I didn't think it would be our older generation itself. But then if we actually look at, you know, what w what's happening out there, I get the feeling like, OK, that's kind of starting to make sense. But you would think it would be like, well, our immature, right? Wouldn't our young, immature, below 30 year olds, they would have the most debt, you know, yeah. from a credit card perspective. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to be that we have, you know, our 40 year olds, 40 year olds uh, like us. Right. Well, I mean, you know, not, I mean. not us. I'm, I'm in a different age bracket than you are now. You, you have to scroll down a lot more to get your uh, birth date year. Right. Is that my what <laughs> this is? This is by what is this by uh, by tens of thousands? Is that what this is? No, it says average. Yeah, no, it's uh, average. No, so it's you know only about seven thousand. Okay. In credit card debt itself, well, cool. average. And so it'd be high or low, but yeah. I, I aged up, so my debt just went down by four hundred dollars. 
<laughs> not bad, not bad. No, but, let, we'll, we'll run through the numbers real quick. So, in in 2023 so far, if you're 29 or less, you have an average of $2,900 in credit card debt. 30 to 39, $5,800. 40 to 49, $7,600. 50 to 64, $7,200, 65 plus $4,700. So that 40 to 49 and 50 to 64 age bracket, those are the two with the most. Yeah, and surprisingly enough, if you talk about like pandemic, the numbers obviously did go down. People did be a little bit more responsible, uh, maybe not going out as much or Amazon was still working, I guess. But, you know, the numbers itself were surprisingly, I guess, lower. We did take a dip in regards to the amount of debt we had, but it looks like it's a sharp uh, turn in 2023. Uh, people are back to work. People are, again, full-time-ish. Back to, you know, spending, going going out, uh, vacationing. Vacationing, that's the other thing, too, between real estate and, like, vacation, you know, your travel agencies or advisors, those numbers are up. People are, people are going out. They're yeah. doing more and spending more. So across all age brackets, debt went down from 2020 to 21. Every age bracket went down, I don't know, dramatically. Not dramatic. But, but it all but, went down. But, yeah, relative. And then every age bracket went up a little bit between 21 and 22, uh, to the, 2021 and 2022. Yeah, coming out of the, you know, the, 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 the restrictions the recession and, and stuff like and that. COVID and and all the, that. Yeah, the recession, correct. And then every age bracket, and this is what got me, Every age bracket from 2022 to the first six months of 2023, there is more credit card debt. If I'm reading this chart right, correct. There is more credit card debt in the first six months of 2023 than there was in all of 2022, and that's consistent amongst all age brackets. Yep, and that's that's great. So, what what do you think is the reason, though? I mean, I again, I think it's we're spending more. I think that's the case. Well, and then you and I talked about it before we recorded. Inflation and interest rates are going up. Interest rates is that's what the article has mentioned as well. Is that the skyrocketing interest rates for a lot of these these uh, credit cards is starting to have an impact on how we use these credit cards. I mean, think about it. If we carry a lot of debt going from month to month, and the interest rate's now, what, 25%, 29% yeah. for some of these credit cards, if you're late on one payment, oh, my goodness, like it, it can balloon up over 30. Well, and I'm looking. I've got um, a loan. I've got a, a line of credit with the law firm here, and I remember a year ago, two years ago, my interest rate, portion of the loan repayment was only about 70 80 bucks um, that same loan even though I've been paying down principal is now 183 dollars right. in interest it's gone up a hundred bucks in interest um, in the last year that's craziness so, and that's and a lot of people are experiencing that with their with their credit cards and the minimum payment right used to be uh, oh you know only 80 bucks if for what four thousand dollar kind of credit or that you have or you have the debt I mean right and all of a sudden now it's if it's the slowly five percent increase ten percent increase itself in interest rates you're you're paying double that from a yeah. minimum payment well and and again if I'm gonna you know before if I were paying 500 bucks a month on my credit card and you know a, a year ago, that would have been, you know, $300 minimum payment, $200 extra. Now it's $450 minimum payment, yeah. $50 extra. So I'm paying down that debt slower. And even maybe I got to bump up my payment because maybe my payment isn't covering um, the the interest that's going to accrue Correct. every month anymore because interest rates have gone up. Exactly, exactly. So... They're saying though, like the the most hit hard for all of these age groups itself is, you know, again, it's always Gen X, right? That's yeah. What they say Gen X is now impacted by what what's happening that we think that you know from a generational impact. Well, I wonder what what kind of hit me too. If you're 29 or less, you're in college. Yep. You've got your first job. Starting off, yep. You're not getting 10 grand limits on your credit cards 20 grand limits on your credit cards you're getting 1500 bucks 2000 bucks 3000 bucks where as you get into your 30s and your 40s and your 50s and you've got better paying jobs and maybe now you get a second card or a third card or a whatever it's probably the reason it's higher for higher ages is 
higher ages have more have the ability to get more debt. Correct. Than a than a you know a credit card company is going to see somebody like me that's been an attorney running his own law right. firm for however many years. I'm probably going to be more attractive and have a higher balance on my card than if I'm Coming you know a sophomore college. in college. Yeah. The other thing I've seen though too, credit cards is not just limited to the network brands, right? You got Best Buys and TJ Maxx's and all of these other companies itself that have their own store brand credit cards. That's where I think some of your younger, you know, the younger group is going to be impacted because <clears throat> those those I would imagine those credit cards don't have as strict restrictions. But even though like oh you know I can only a thousand dollars at TJ Maxx, but if I do that at several stores you now have debt that can be more than ten thousand dollars and you're just getting specific you know clothing or best buy or or you know <laughs> bed bath and beyond right. you know whatever whatever floats your boat but i think that's what gets uh you yes, you build your credit and your credit history so that you could maybe get some of your your you know your visa mastercard higher limits but again, it, it, the amount of debt is still high. Um, and I think that's what gets us tr in trouble when it comes to the younger folks. Yeah, now one of the things that this article also then goes on to talk about is, well, what do we do about it? Yeah. Um, it does mention, you know, interest credit card debt's getting more expensive because yep. of higher interest rates. But then it talks about how to start paying down your credit card debt. And it's funny, the first thing that it talks about is something that I don't know that I necessarily agree with. Yeah. The zero balance transfer credit card. We get it. Uh, it, it yes, it's the interest rate. It's hard to get some of those credit cards with zero balance. But obviously, what ends up happening is there's a, there's a time limit tied to the zero balance, right? The zero interest as part of it. What ends up happening, if you don't pay that card off within the set amount of time, 12, if it's a, you know, 12 months, or again, if you get lucky, you know, 18 months, 24 months, if you don't pay it off, you're still in the same boat. So what are we changing? Yeah, yeah you're, you're doing the, uh, you know, what's that game? You're the shuffling of the um, ball under the, the shells. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, shell the, game. The shell game. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my brain is not working. It's so. early. We need that cup of coffee. <laughs> so, but if you're doing the shell game itself, what ends up happening is y you might get lucky enough to, but if there's no plan, if there's no money that you're setting aside extra money to pay it off, you're just, again, delaying the inevitable. You know, your interest will occur. Yeah. You'll have it 18, 12 months, whatever the, the amount is. Well, and the other problem with those, there's two other problems with that strategy. One of them is if you're going to do that, you can't then – the card that you went down right. to, to zero because you transferred it to the zero percent card, it. don't use the card <laughs> that you yeah. just paid down to zero. Otherwise, you're just doubling your debt. And then, like you said, if you don't pay it off, not only does the interest kick in, but some of these cards, you yes. got to be really careful, the interest kicks in on the entire balance that Correct. you transferred. So if you transferred five grand, you paid it down to two. Now, not only do you have to pay the two, but you got to repay the interest right. as if Would it was recorded. five. Correct. Five thousand. Oh, geez. So you got to be careful of that. The other Read thing, the fine print, right there. You go. Baby. Yeah. No one does that. You know, have you? When's the last time you, you the service agreement for Apple? Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I've actually got a friend that drafts that kind of stuff. There too. you go. <laughs> uh, the other thing that this article said again, I you got to be really careful. I don't know that I agree. Is to consolidate your credit card debt. Yep. Same concept. If you're going to consolidate your debt. You got to make sure that the consolidated loan is is affordable for you and yep. you can pay it off. Mm -hmm. um, you won't get hit so much with the interest for failing to pay it off because the interest is baked in from day one. But again, you don't want to run up the cards that now have gone down to zero and then you're just doubling your debt. Well, and I think that's that that's the thing we run into with a, a lot of clients that I've and again, we make these mistakes where it's I, you know, pay off. Oh, you get this notion of like, well, look, you paid off your credit cards. It's like, no, you've, again, you've moved the debt from one type of tool to another. And if you do not deter, you know, stop or push away the, the, the behavior that got you into the situation the first time, what ends up happening for most people who do either balance transfers or debt consolidation, they run up the credit card. They run up a new, new, new set of debt, and now you have debt that's right. double. Um, and that you're that you're paying off, and a lot of these consolidated loans, they're not like one year, two years. They're five years. You know, there's a five year commitment, unless you have a, a game plan where you're paying extra to these types of loans, to these types of credit cards, to these types of debt. You again, the likelihood of 
uh, of having your habits and behavior that got you into that situation is just higher and you're you know right. you get back into that into that debt itself and it's like double based off of where you're at in, in the journey so yeah i would not not a good idea in regards to how to handle the situation but i would say what do we add to it well if you do the the balance transfer right have a budget that allows you then pay extra to this credit card so that it's paid off before the time allotted that's that would be my my uh you know added to the article in the sense of like how do i how do i address this situation so that i don't ha still be end up with debt at the end of the you know the the apr or whatever yeah i mean you may period. your your minimum payment may not change so if you're paying five hundred dollars on the old card and you balance transfer i would at least be disciplined enough to pay five hundred dollars on the new card right what i would probably do is combine that with you know how much am i going to transfer to the new card what is the repayment period? How long is the zero percent interest valid uh, on that right. on that balance transfer, and then divide? So if I <laughs> if I transfer, um, let's say let's make it let's make it even round numbers. If I transfer six grand, and it's a twelve month interest free, I'm gonna be I'm gonna budget to make five hundred dollar payments every month. That's it. And that way, at the end of the year, it's paid down to zero. But think about it. Most people who go into these situations where they're trying to these these types of solutions, they probably can't afford the monthly payment. You know, they're in that they're in that mode. So what 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 kind of advice can we have there? Because they're looking for relief in the monthly payment. It's not the total or the interest rate. They're looking for how can I relief my relieve myself from a monthly perspective? Because that's you know again you know how it is. Sometimes we yeah. we overspend and we get into those situations where it's like oops. You know, well, if I can lower the payment, it'll make me a little less stress per month. I mean, that's where I go back to what Bruce was talking about. Track your expenses. Yep. Trim what you can trim. If you've got if you've got to make drastic changes in the short term, if you've got to tighten the belt in the short term, do it. I mean, you know, we just got back. We took a long weekend and went to Universal Studios, mm -hmm. which I don't know. I'm starting to like Universal better than than Disney. I but, would agree. But um, <laughs> you know, leading up to that trip. My son um, kept saying, I want to go to the store and I want to go look at new Pokemon cards. Right. I want to look at new soccer cards. And I kept having to say to him, yeah, we can do that, but that's less money you're going to have to buy stuff at Universal. Right. Yeah, we can do that, but then you're, you're not going to be able to get what you want at Universal. And I had to kind of, you know, when we get into, so right now, my as we record this, my son, my younger son's birthday is on Sunday, Sunday Father's okay. Day. Awesome. Happy Father's Happy Day. Happy Father's Day. I got to share, go. share Father's Day with my son. <laughs> but, You're losing, um, just letting you know. Well, I mean, I guess I wouldn't be a dad if it wasn't for him. And so if he wants his birthday, you know, whatever. But you ba his birthday is middle of June. Basically, middle of uh, May, yep. we kind of stop buying him stuff. Yeah. Because we know he's going to get a lot of stuff for his birthday. Yeah, I imagine so, grandmas and everybody's going to you know, hook yeah. him up. So that makes sense. Same thing for my older son. His birthday is the beginning of October. So once we get into the you know, beginning to middle of September, if he wants stuff, it's like, dude, start making a list and let's get you stuff for your birthday. Right. Maybe that's what you need to do in terms of you know, getting out of debt is just tightening the belt. You know, We talked about doing a no-spend day yeah maybe we do that as a challenge in fact why don't we say this so if you're interested yeah in doing a no spend day with us uh shoot one of us an email our our emails are are in the notes shoot one of us an email if we get enough interest in terms of people that want to do a no spend day uh we'll get it set up i guess we got to figure out if we're going to do it as like a contest what does the winner get uh, you, it, <laughs> I was saying I, that's a great question. We we'll have to think about that yeah. one too. Maybe in the after pod we could talk about ideas. Maybe and see and see what kind of what kind of prize we have for that. That's a good idea. Maybe, but if you're interested in doing a no spend day with us, then well, we can't uh, spend any money that day though. So we can't. The prize has to be right. after. Well, the prize yeah, prize would be the next day. <laughs> um, and I don't know how you would the one who doesn't spend the least. But I guess the instant well, anyone a, spends, they're out. Once of the you chip. spend, you can't because so make sure you get gas the day before. Right. Make groceries. sure you know get the groceries, whatever you need. No lunch, no nothing. Yeah. The, the idea is you know get us a, a, a motivation to be able to say no spend on that day, um, and you know how much how did it feel? Because that's the idea. It's it's more of like not only just going through the act itself, but 
how did it feel when it comes to the spend date? So I've had people try to do it for like 15, 30 days. Ugh. That's got to be. That's let's start be. with one. <laughs> okay, there. And then and then we'll go to a no spend week. Okay, okay, and there we'll you see go. how we'll see how it goes. Actually, so I'm kind of I'm kind of smelling what our next uh, <laughs> podcast episode's going to be about. We'll have to pull some some stuff online about how to do a no spend day challenge. There but, you go. Uh, the other article that we pulled up was from Yahoo Finance, and it's how to break the credit card debt cycle. Yep. Uh, and again, it talks about uh, credit card interest rates are sky high. Yep. Um, increasing the amount of your credit card payment goes towards servicing the, the debt and the interest every month and less towards paying down your balance. Um, and then to break the credit card cycle, you have to pay off debt while also avoiding new debt, kind of what we were and that, talking uh, about uh, before. It, guys, this is not hard. This is not like rocket science itself. You can't get out of the hole if you keep filling it. <laughs> you can't, you know, if you keep digging, digging the hole itself. Yeah. Although this article, I think, is a little bit more useful. Yeah, so, I, I like the spending. Right. It had mentioned a, a budget spending plan. Right. Um, what does that mean for everyone is going to be different. So I think that's the thing you have to keep in mind when it comes to a budget. It's not just, once again, I, I kind of tell even with my clients, it's not just writing it on paper and it's done. You know, not putting it in Quicken or QuickBooks or whatever it might be. But like you, you put the plan together. How are you executing on it? Like, the, you know, it's putting that, putting that on paper gives you the vision to be able to say, here's what I need to do for the month to stay within within the budget that I've that I've set. Right. That's hard. It's not easy because it's easy for us to go. But life happens. Sean, life happens. I, we got birthday parties yeah. coming up. We I did. Got... I did a uh, Christmas. Oh, my God. How do how do how do I deal with Christmas? I'm like, dude, again, these kind of things. We know are coming, and yet we feel like they're not, you know, well, they're not part of the planning. So I'll, I'll pile something else on top of you. Are you going to be in the new house before Christmas or after? Oh, uh, thank goodness for us itself, it's going to be after. <laughs> okay, so you can budget Christmas. I can while budget also Christmas. But I already, what in are the you talking house? about? But I already told my kids, uh, guys, your, your your Christmas gift is is your room is your in the room? new house. You, <laughs> what are you crazy? I remember growing up, paint my, maybe you could get for Christmas. Growing up, my dad used to, you know, Dad, I want to have a birthday party. You'd be like, McDonald's is open. <laughs> I remember when they used to have parties at McDonald's. That's funny. I think I did. Yeah. I don't think I did any of mine. I think I did have some friends' parties at McDonald's. Yeah, we but. did. I think I did it once. Again, uh, uh, aging myself, nineteen. I think it was 1979. You know, I was like a few years old. Even my sister remembers. I didn't remember. Yeah. But, my, you know, of course, I've seen VHS recordings. <laughs> VHS. <laughs> so, yeah, just uh, VHS age, recordings of you listening to the eight track age, age, age ourselves here a little bit. But yeah. that's uh, yeah. What do you do? We watch the little beta max. Yep, that's there all good, go. buddy. <laughs> so some of the other tips in here. Stop using credit cards for purchases. Makes sense. Uh, instead, consider using debit cards or cash. Yep. Um, or or if you're weak. And you can't control using of the plastic itself. I would agree. Just go to go to your envelope system. Put yeah. the cash. Put the cash that you need for a particular category. Uh, use the money. Uh, it's harder to use money than it is to swipe the card. There's a, yeah. there's a. They always say there's a psychological tie to you know giving cash away than just swiping. Well, and and I've been you know kind of surfing late at night on the internet. Some of the reels that I'm watching, if you watch. You know Warren Buffett, some of the other yep. you know super super rich people, they all carry cash in their wallet. Yep. Anywhere from I've seen, I think Warren Buffett said something like five hundred bucks he carries in his wallet. Some people carry a hundred, two hundred bucks in your wallet. I can uh, carry around a hundred bucks, a hundred and fifty bucks in my wallet for weeks without spending it. And you're right, I'll go to, I'll go to you know Publix or something, or I'll go to lunch, or I'll go here, yep. I'll go there. And my first instinct is to pull out my debit card, and then I'll go, wait a minute, I got cash. Let I don't want to put it on the debit card. I got right. cash. And then I don't want to spend the cash. <laughs> How so, long more can I keep the cash right. in the wallet so itself? So I, I put stuff it's back like a on challenge. the challenge. It's a challenge to ourselves to be able to, like, let's not spend this money that we do have in our wallet. Makes right. sense. And those are, the, again, as part of, like, the no spend challenge, these kind of things, that's the little things that you can do to kind of, again, psychologically play and say, how am I going to change my behavior? Well, like I said, it's easier to swipe and not know how much or where the money's coming from. It's easier to do that than it is to actually pull out cash and do something. So. Well, and, and I've, I've seen – it's happened to me a couple of years ago. It's happened to me too where you pull out the credit card and you're like, 
I hope there's room on here. Yeah. And you go to swipe no. it. And and if it gets declined, you pull out the debit card. And you're like, oh, I wish there was room I on this one. I hope there's some money there. And you swipe. Let's I, not play that game. Yeah, no. that, that, let me tell you, that's more stress. And I've seen I've seen a, quite a few people itself, you know, at the grocery line, at Target. They get, it feel like they're like, well, let's put some money on this credit card. Let's put some money on this credit card. And it's like. For me, and I remember those again. I'm not judging itself. I totally, I know the feeling because that's exactly what we went through, uh, as part of our journey to to wake up and say we've got to do something different. So, yeah. but y- until you realize like that kind of game itself is just hurting you, we've got to we again you've got to got to wake up to to the possibility of like let's how do we do this differently? Yeah. And I think that's one of those of like realizing yep it, this is not working for us. Let's do something different. Yeah. Well, and again, the, so the article goes on. Consolidate debts. We've already talked yeah. about that. Uh, look for additional earning opportunities. Make more money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I've said there's two ways to eliminate debt. One is to, or there's two ways to um, make more profit. One is to reduce expenses. The other is to increase income. So if you can't reduce expenses, look for ways to increase income. That's it. Um, build up an emergency fund. You know, I if you're trying to get, I get it. So there's all there's this debate of, do I put money away in savings or investments or retirement while I'm still in debt? And yep. some people say, no, get out of debt first, right. then start saving. Some people say, no, nah, you can do both at the same time. I don't know. I guess for me, it depends on that's how, a how That's much. a debate. That's yeah. a debate, I guess, of maybe another episode here maybe in the future. Episode. But I, I, I would say, he, here's the thing. The, the purpose of the emergency fund, we'll leave it at this is life is going to happen it's good to have cash available for that for that life happening well what's the statistic how however many percent of americans don't have and right. i've heard a thousand dollars i've heard four hundred four hundred i think it's like sixty percent can yeah. cannot afford a four hundred dollar expense and, today you know we just i don't know what my wife is doing but she drove over something a month ago and totally shredded her tire nice like shredded her tire and uh we took it so we get we get our tires at costco it's a little bit cheaper right plus they have a tremendous warranty so we took the car back to costco and they said well you're just out of warranty on that particular tire that got shredded so we'll we'll, but we'll you know we'll sell you a new one costco rates whatever blah 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 so we we throw that tire on within a week she gets a nail in a different uh, tire. <laughs> so we take that one back to Costco. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, it would have been repairable based on where the nail was. But because you drove on it for so long, you've you've um, damaged the 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 tire well the inner, the inside right, well. Gotcha. And so we got to replace that tire. But that one was, you know, you bought it within the last whatever, six months. So that one, all you got to do is pay the the labor charge, like ten bucks. Okay, cool. And they threw that. They they took the old tire, threw the new tire on. So, but you know, the point is, how many of us have saved up? Shoot, I got to buy a new tire because exactly. I, I can't drive around on a spare right. until I can save up the money to buy a new tire. I just can't do it. And that's the idea. I agree with you there. And that I've done that a few times where you know. First of all, uh, what I would recommend is avoid wherever she's driving now. Let's just take another road <laughs> so you don't yeah. get into another Honey, nail. Change your route. <laughs> wherever that's you're going, idea. change your route. Good idea. Good idea. So, but, yeah, that's that's the idea. What the emergency fund is supposed to do is to kind of you know, manage just your basic auto repairs, oil changes. I mean, those are not emergencies, but let me tell you, tires to get to work, that's an emergency. Yeah. You, you need to make sure you have you know fresh uh, tires not only for to get to where but safety wise you want to make sure again this is florida there's some crazy people out there with, well, with tires especially with my wife driving two kids around i want to right. make sure she's able to get where she needs to go makes she's sense. able to get home all that other kind of stuff so makes sense makes sense uh, wow. i think yeah i think that'll do it i think we've 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 crushed it. Up. We've yeah, we've <laughs> crushed this episode. Um, no pun intended. Yeah, I do want to talk about uh, Mark Purvis, our sponsor. He's got LegacySpotlight.com. So if you want to uh, create a legacy for future generations, if you want to record stories of older generations, you know, how did you get out of debt, Grandma and Grandpa? Right. Uh, contact Mark at LegacySpotlight.com. He's an award-winning uh, videographer. He's got twenty plus years of experience he'll come out he'll make it fun uh also check out the crushing debt patreon any money that you make 
does not go towards our debt. It goes towards making. Well, maybe it goes towards the debt of <laughs> the, the debt show. Of podcast. Yeah, because we do have some expenses that we've got to pay. So check out. Uh, plus, there's extra content. I was poking around the Patreon page the other day. There's a ton of content now on that Patreon yes. page. Uh, and then check out our social medias. I've got the 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 YouTube pages, the Instagram pages, the yep, all, all that, same, all the social here. medias. Same here. You get you, you get to make fun of me. Yeah. While you learn learn a little new nugget. So I think that'll do it for this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Um, you know, how much credit card debt do you have? How do you break the credit card debt cycle? Uh, we hope you're able to do that so that you have more money at the end of the month rather than month at the end of the money. And we will talk to you in next week's episode.